Hi, it's uh, Laurent from T Tactical. Today again, uh, I'm with uh, Nigel February, and we will have uh, another uh, conversation about uh, martial arts and uh, violence in general. Hi, Nigel. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Laurent. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Last time we discussed about uh, predatory mindset and uh, intent and uh, quite a lot of things. So if you haven't seen that, uh, just uh, go to have a look on the channel. Uh, but to go on uh, with that uh, conversation, I wanted to ask a few questions to you about um, the, the darkness that we started to discuss. So uh, in, uh, in previous conversation, we discussed about the, the integration of shadow which is uh, which is uh, found in uh, in Jungian uh, psychology, for example. And uh, so, in your vision, what's the relationship between that and martial arts, and um, especially with the Piper? Well, look, I, um, they they speak about. Um, especially in psychology, you know, the shadow or the the, the, the dark side or darkness, shadow self, or that dark side, whatever they want to call it, um, they, they speak about it in isolation. And uh, so, uh, yeah, we had that problem with the with the recording. So what you what you told me is basically that uh, psychology is. Um, uh, looking at that dark side as a separate thing, but it's uh, actually it's the it's inside the same person. It's just that those sides have uh, uh, different jobs. You're uh, in 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 a calm life in general. It's the, the 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 bright side, let's say, that will usually manage the things. But you cannot be just positivity and love and and, and, and beautiful things and something has to come up when when uh, when you get attacked and that's the the job of the dark side that would be a summary yes. of what okay okay and um so uh, also uh, you were explaining that martial arts and and, and, and piper uh allow to get in in touch with that a little bit more um would it be possible to explain a little bit what kind of uh, what kind of process makes you get more in contact with that uh, that part? Well, first of all, um, I will speak about martial arts in general. I don't care which art you practice. I don't care uh, okay. what the style okay. is. Right? Um, talking about from knives to to, to um, Wrestling, boxing, kickboxing, Krav Maga, Jiu Jitsu, doesn't matter, Judo, Taekwondo. The fact is that within the martial arts, there is the, the, the actual physical application of getting to that or, or addressing the dark side issue. Psychology doesn't have that. They can talk about it, they can describe it, but they don't have the physical mechanism by which to address it. They don't. Right? So anytime okay. somebody studies the martial arts, um, they they are in a better position to actually physically find out where this thing is. In other words, you will find out what w w if you have it. How deep down is it? How 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 repressed or or um, how hidden it is? You know, some, sometimes you you you, um, you go to a dojo and you see a guy that that has only been training for for two or three weeks, but the fighting spirit in him. He's so fearless, he doesn't care about getting hit in that. Now, that's a guy who, who has that fighting spirit. He doesn't know the techniques, but he's, in other words, so, so he's, he's in touch with his darkness all the time, you know, the ability to be able to hit the punch without having to think, oh, you know, what happens if I hit? You just hit, you know, that's the whole thing about survival is not, it, it's not hesitating. So people that have fighting spirit are people that, they will continue, you know, despite uh, uh, the setbacks. But then you have a guy that is a perfect martial artist in terms of he has all the skill and technique. But the minute a real, you know, he's faced with, with having to execute, you know, uh, hit or punch harder than, than normal, he, you know, he, he, he starts to, um, uh, I would say, fade away. But here's the thing. 
but only within that that context will you be able to know. There's no other way you're going to know. In a therapy session, you're not going to know. They always say that if you're feeling, if you're feeling, um, if you if you want to know somebody, you fight them. And it's it, it's been coming on for for many generations. They say you don't truly know a man until you fight him, and that's the truth. Um, you you feel closer to this person because everything that you could possibly have done to this guy, you've done to this guy, and there's nothing else. There's no other physical hurdle that the two of us can can cross. It happens in a conversation, yes, but unless we fight each other, then we're never going to know about ourselves. See, that's the other thing. Um, and again, fighting one another is is the same as when we have um, a deep conversation. It is on that level. Mm -hmm. See, but you won't know. Like I won't know if you if you have fighting spirit. I, I won't know unless we fight. So I think from a from a from addressing that that all martial arts have that ability to tap into um, into that darkness to be able to actually dip their finger into actually see oh it's there you know we can we can address it but if it's a non-physical like sports and those kind of things uh, they can't really address it at that level because with a martial artist actually looking for it because they say the first person that is your biggest opponent is yourself all the self-doubt and the, the hesitation and the fear uh, the negativity about yourself that is inside the, the, the darkness is, is 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 all of that all that negativity so you first have to break those little barriers down you then control it. You can't do it without the martial arts. I mean, think about it. Um, uh, aid, what, what is it? Attention deficit disorder didn't exist. Uh, kids that have that are hyperactive. If you had enrolled them in the martial arts, it would have controlled all of that. There would have been nothing like that. People that have yes. depression, the, um, the martial arts would, uh, will help you specifically that because it's a, a practice and a discipline that is that is extremely old. You know, I mean, we're talking about millennia old. It's like you know, the so with relationship with fire, actually. You you can train in, in a classroom on how to, to stop a fire, but uh, as long as you don't go and see one and really feel how it is, you don't really know how you will react in front of it. I think that, that is the best um, analogy because at the same time, fire can provide heat, fire can cook our food, but that can only happen if we if we controlled it. If we found a way to harness it and control it, could we then say, I can I can warm food, I can cook food, I can uh, keep you warm from the cold. But if it's yeah. not controlled, it will burn down everything. So yeah. the dark side is exactly yeah. like that. Um, or your negative side, or the or the your fighting instinct. It's exactly the same. If you don't find a way to control it, and only through the martial arts specifically, like like every system, like where you're actually punching and hitting something, you're literally tempering and controlling that thing. Because this thing just wants to to do violence. Guess what? You're giving him the opportunity to do it. You're giving him something to hit. And when he starts seeing that, you know, he's being fed enough, he starts to control the blows. Now he knows that whenever there's a fight, he knows what he's capable of. So it seems like I'm speaking about somebody that has a split personality, but I'd rather say I'm speaking about someone like all of us that have twin personalities. Because a split is a separation. Twins are, are basically a joined uh, 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 um, enterprise. We actually say we have two, but they, they, are, the, they are basically uh, in accordance, you know, they're in agreement. That's, that's essentially what you want. You want something that's in agreement with you. If I'm a positive person, it means the negative side is not going to uh, uh, break that down. Uh, what you were explaining made me think uh, also, you know, it's the same with violence, uh, and fire and violence. Uh, violence could be defined like you, you, you impose by force some change in the environment or on someone. Uh, it's 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 a little bit the same idea. If you if you just cut down trees, it could be seen as violence, but also could be used to to build your house. So the 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 process only doesn't necessarily has uh, 
an attached value. It depends on, on how it's uh, channeled and, and what you do with it. Mm. Well, that's true. So, so, so last time we spoke about the predatory mindset, and that was just to describe what it, you know, what it is when you want to kill something. Um, but it wasn't a, it wasn't an attack on the martial arts. In fact, um, anybody that 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 practices Piper today, um, any anybody, no matter you know where in the world they're practicing, you'll always notice those are guys that have black belts in other systems, which is a requirement. Why? Because you still need to continue practicing um, other martial arts to make sure that you that the entire body is is, is taken care of. Um, you know, like you said, you, you can you can chop down trees and that's seen as violent. But if the trees being chopped down can provide wood for fire and wood for for uh, houses, then it's seen as controlling that action. You just control the violent action that gave you something uh, productive. The martial arts are seen as that, and I always say it in, in a generalized version of saying, I'm not isolating this martial art or that one. I'm saying all of it um, has, a, um, had, has that effect. You, can, you can't create. Like, here's the thing. Let's say you have a degree in psychology, right? So you know everything about the human mind and, and all of that. And somebody comes up to you and puts a gun to your head. You see, he's already in the process of of, of um, implying violence. He's, he's he's doing violence at the moment. He's not he's not putting the he's not giving you the option of choosing violence. So no, no, no. He's 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 in the middle of it. You see that 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 theoretical understanding of the mind and the body is not going to help you because it, at that moment the martial artist has the the upper hand because he's physically prepared. Or when things go his way and when things don't go his way, his body and his mind has reconciled the, 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 what I would call the outcome. You see, that's the other thing is that we speak about the outcome a lot more than untrained people. And, and uh, uh, I could put anybody there. I could put anybody from any other martial art and then we'd, we'd basically be, be able to understand each other. And say no matter which style you you um, you practice, we have gone through that process together, all of us. Yes, Five and just also, an sorry. Also, the the uh, about what <clears throat> we were uh, saying earlier, the the brain that will get a degree in in, in whatever uh, is not the same brain that the one that will actually process uh, violence. So that's, that's yes. probably uh, a very good reason why, uh, why uh, the, the martial arts are effective in that, because you, that, that brain is, is not, um, uh, doesn't make the, the difference very, very well between training and, and reality, as long as the training is, is quite proper. We were discussing that earlier. We tend, uh, once, once we get... Um, into training in, intensely, we tend to, to have physical reactions that look like the real thing. So in, in that way, also uh, martial arts will, will provide that, uh, that test, test tube, you know, where you can experience your, your body and your, your uh, primal brains reacting to that kind of stimulation. And, and I think um, some people are going to say, um, yes, but it has to be full contact, and 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 some people are going to say, uh, well, what about doing forms or kata and and meditation? I said, well, all of it is good because you have a chance to 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 play around with the intensity. You have you literally have a a menu with regards to how violence is going to be done. Somebody that just studies the concept of violence theoretically will not understand. You're not going to feel the fire burn. You need to feel it, and it must burn inside if you're going to understand that um, that fire. You see, when when we talk about the, the the predatory mindset, you know, you 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 speak about what bad people are going to be doing to you, right? Which is currently happening, right? Um, and we 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 <clears throat> we constantly um, we constantly talk about about um, how violence is wrong. It's always the people that, 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 that are pacifists that say violence is wrong, but it's the gold standard. Violence is the gold standard. 
it is the reason why the world looks the way it looks, why we have borders on countries. It's the reason why um, some countries are richer than others. It's the reason why people could make slaves of other human beings. Why? Because their level of violence and, their, and, and, and what they were prepared to do to get what they wanted was where well, they physically took things. And that's how this world um, existed. Show me, show me one country that is the richest country in the world but has the weakest military. It doesn't exist. You, you can speak about um, um, what France did as, as a colonial power. You can speak about what America did. You can speak about what Britain did as, a, as colonial powers, what Spain did, what Belgium did. The fact is, it's, it's, one, it's, it's always good. It, it's, it's always one thing to speak about another country from, from the one that was defeated. If you wanted to stop uh, France from taking your things, and you should have just gotten a bigger army. That was literally how it was. Caesar, Julius Caesar actually go, uh, conquered a lot, a large parts of the of the civilized world, but there was a lot of Germanic tribes that tried to stop him, right? So it was a case of who's prepared to bring the, the, the biggest level of violence. And this is something that I am very passionate about. I always say it is on the shoulders and on the backs of the warrior that the scholar has the ability to, or has the time and ability to think and write. It is only because of the warrior that the artisan, the, the tradesman, the carpenter, the electrician, the plumber has, um, um, can do their work in peace. If you play these online games like Age of Empires, you'll notice that before, before your characters can start building a settlement, you need warriors to be, protect them from, from um, the elements. You need soldiers to first stop fighting other soldiers. Then you need soldiers to help you um, uh, kill the animals that's going to... Uh, um, uh, destroy your, your 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 craftsman, right? That's even video yeah. games get it. But the the history of the world is based on violence. That's literally how um, I, I can't think of anything else. We didn't talk our way into getting land. That's how it is. You so so I always say uh, uh, people say yes, but you should give the land back. I'm like no, you need to get a bigger army and get your land back. Um, unfortunately, that's the 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 the, the rules we we were living by. Um, in South Africa, the same thing. Different different nations conquered parts of, of South Africa and, and, you know, took charge of it. It's like you should have had your level of violence should have been higher than the person who invaded you. But it wasn't. So he came and he, and, and, and he turned this into one of his own uh, uh, um, places. So that's why I say violence is the gold standard. It's the reason why territories are carved out the way it is. I have a good friend I that studied uh, philosophy, and we had that kind of discussion many times. And uh, I always told him, and he agrees with that, uh, to have values, first of all, you have to be alive. So uh, it doesn't matter if you say things like, we don't want to be like them, or, you know, uh, violence is not the answer. Historically, violence has been the answer the right answer way, way, way more times than, than any other thing. <laughs> so, yes. first of all, you, you need to be able to defend. Uh, and, and the problem is that the predator will set the standards. If, if they come with, with a gun and you say guns are bad, I don't, I, I'm not like them, I don't want to use guns, then you better find something really effective. But... That doesn't really happen very often. So, first of all, you need to, 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 to be alive, to have values. If you find a way to stay alive and to keep your things and to be in safety, and then inside that perimeter you want to set specific values, that you can do, but you will need to enforce that. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. No, it, it, it's true. Only, only the philosopher... Only the philosopher can speak when there's no fight. You can't, you can't even perform surgery if somebody's fighting. You can't build um, a house if somebody's trying to kill you. In order for you to say, I don't believe in violence, you first need to be alive, like you said. You first need to have life. So you, uh, uh, people think they can, they can negotiate their way when somebody wants to you know, take their his skull off with an axe. And now you can't. You need to first bring a physical level of violence 
that's higher than what he has. And then when you're done killing, then you can reflect philosophically what I did or life is meaningless or, or you can write as much poems as you like, but you can only write poems if you're alive. Yes. There is just one alternative to, uh, in, in, a, in an aggression, there is just one alternative to violence. And it's, if it works, it's intimidation. But anyway, it's actually a threat of violence. So, yes. Intimidation is the threat of violence. That, that's, that's, that's what the government does in every country. Um, we, they, in, they tell us there are certain laws we have to follow, right? You have to pay your taxes, but they only tell us you, you make sure you don't um, you pay your traffic fines. You don't steal, you don't kill. But they tell us this under the threat of violence. They say they don't have to say it, but it's, it's basically implied that if you don't um, if you don't obey the, the laws of the country, they will use violence to make you obey or to end your life. That is every country in the world. Even if you look at an old tribe, the, the, the laws of the community is, 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 is strict. They will use greater violence to make sure that you are, are, are um, kept in, in line. Right? That's, that's how it is. I mean, someone can show me that that, um, that that isn't. It means that you can not fight. You cannot fight. Uh, uh, um, there's no other way you can fight violence in its, in its current format without employing something similar. You can't. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I don't see um, any other way. Years, it's a, ago, it's a years ago, I had a discussion of that kind with someone. Uh, their daughter was uh, having problems at school. She was maybe 10 and uh, she, she got beaten. Not, not very badly, but still. And uh, her father was telling her, you must defend. And uh, her mother wasn't agreeing with that. She, she was saying stuff like, yeah, but you don't answer to violence with violence and, and, and stuff. And so I told her, OK, let's say if I uh, slap you in the face and, uh, and you fall on the ground, what will you do um, if you don't want to use violence to make it stop? If I don't stop, let's say you call the police, uh, even that they arrive in time to stop me before I, I, I even kill you, maybe. What will happen? They will come and they will threaten me with guns for me to stop. Which means that, yeah, you don't use violence, but you call people to use violence on me. So actually, it's the same. It just makes you a little bit more um, hypocritical, actually. But doesn't yes. stand. Exactly. That's exactly um, the the way I um, um, I look at things. Um, you, if 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 uh, you threaten me with physical violence, you beat me up a few times, right? I don't retaliate because I believe that I'm above violence. Like violence doesn't solve everything. Uh, yes, it does. In this case, it does. Why? Because I now tell you that someone has to come and protect me using the same amount of violence or greater violence to stop you. So, so that's literally bringing a bigger bully. So, so do you understand? So you at this level, I'm calling someone that's this level, right? So yes. then what happens, then what happens is you're not afraid of the police. Now, what am I going to do now? If you're not afraid of the police, I've got no other option. There's not, there's nothing left. So what normally happens when people say stuff like that is they hope, See, they live on hope and they wish. These are all magical properties that violence doesn't visit them. Now, my late father told me many years ago when I was about 15 or 16. So he told me, he said, because he was a, um, he was a, a professional musician and he wasn't famous enough to, to have a bodyguard. So they used to, you know, look after themselves. And it was on the Cape Flats. And he said, the only way people are going to leave you alone, right? And this is, this is I, I remember these words clearly. He said, the only way people are going to leave you alone is you don't have to be violent all the time. 
This doesn't mean you must fight all the time. He says, you just have to be violent once. In other words, you just need to make a statement once because here's the thing. Predators don't like other predators who can defend themselves. People don't like people who can actually hurt them. So what they do is they, they, they go around and look for the weak ones, the timid ones, the cowards. They look for those people. But when they see that you prepare to bash their skulls in, guess what they do? Automatically, you get respect. Automatically, people make wide turns around you. He says, this is his words to me. He says, you must make sure no one, that you take shit from no one. That, that, that is like he was, <laughs> that's exactly how he said it. He said, he, he told me, he says, you take shit from no one because you just have to do it once and then you will live a, peace, a peaceful life, he said. When people know that what you prepare to do, then they will treat you differently. But if you yes. constantly, the timid guy, People, even the people who can't fight are going to take advantage of you. So um, the last time we spoke, we, we, we specifically targeted the differences between a martial arts mindset and then the predator. In this case, I think it's a lot more, uh, it's a, it's a lot more, more general where we speak about violence as it is because we, we're doing this podcast on the, on the back of uh, um, but two mass shootings in the U.S., right? Yes. Um, you still have people in the yes. U.S. and in Cape Town. In Cape Town, they don't believe in violence. In Cape Town, you've got people who've never even seen violence because they live in in in, in protected um, neighborhoods where there's security yeah. guards. Uh, it's always and here's uh, here's the thing, Lauren. You you you'll notice the people that come up with the non-violent uh, 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 philosophies are the ones who can't fight, are the ones who can't defend themselves. They, they can't defend themselves with, but they've got enough theoretical knowledge to speak to you about, oh, you should turn the other cheek and you should. No, 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 you, 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 you can't. That's, you, you, before you can have a philosophy, you need to be alive. But you know about that, the, 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 I was about to say something very similar. The best the people uh, that create that security do their job the more they look completely useless. And that's the tragedy of that. Mm. Because it means if you have a very good safety around you, it means that the, the safety net is on point and everybody is doing their job. And then you actually uh, get the, the chance to think that they don't exist because nothing happens anyway. So they are not, they are not useful. But... Uh, it would be very interesting to, 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 to give those people a chance to just for one week live in an environment where they don't have the safety net and see how yes. it works. I think that's what's happening on the Cape Flats now. You've got, you've got mothers who are preparing um, supper at the moment. Um, say, so look at the time now. It's about, say, 20 to 9 evening. Yeah. So... The kids are getting ready for school, or they, you know, they're in the bath, and suddenly you just hear gunshots, and the bullets are flying through the um, the, the, the windows, and they have it's, it's such a normal thing where they have to just lay on the ground until the the, 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 the shooting subsides. That is how they 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 have been conditioned in terms of violence. It doesn't mean that they are used to it. I mean, if you look at how these people have have hypertension, anxiety. Um, alcoholism is, is more because it's, 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 it's too much. It's like living in a war zone. Yeah. So imagine you took those people that live in these, these, these um, safe neighborhoods and put them in there just for a week to see how their perspective changes. Because yeah, right now, these people on the Cape Flats feel very helpless. Like if you're in a war zone and you're not a soldier, but they're bombing houses next to you, you can't do anything. You can't shoot back. You can't protect yourself. You're hopeless and helpless. That's the other thing that, that um, you know, and they're all, and, 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 I, and I keep hearing when I do these safety talks um, in Cape Town, I always hear people say stuff like, um, they, or they get advice when they say, uh, when, when a criminal comes to you and, he, and he, he wants your material things, your wallet and phone or whatever, you must just hand it over. Just give all your material stuff. You can replace them. And I'm like, when did we uh, get uh, negotiate with criminals? Like, how do you know that he's going to stop at the, at the, at just taking my my stuff? He already 
he's he, he's already crossing the line yeah. to break both the two most cardinal rules for every country is don't murder and don't steal those are the two cardinal rules in every country if he's prepared yes. to break those yeah. two at what point is lying cheating being deceitful um uh, beyond him those are small crimes compared to what he's prepared to do so if i give my stuff he can decide at any moment he can decide. There's no control. Remember, I cannot control him now. I can't control his thoughts. I can't predict his thoughts because I was told, you just hand your stuff over. You know? And nothing stops him from still plugging me with a, with a, uh, with a bullet or stabbing me. Nothing. Yes. Um, so, just to come back to the, to the, to the question here, uh, that was a cool... Uh, huge answer but um what what would you say is the difference then between because we started with uh, martial arts in general what would be the the the, the differences uh, between martial arts and piper specifically in that uh, in that idea of darkness and uh, and uh, and the, the shadow part how is that uh, maybe helping you to um, get more in contact with it? Well, um, it's, it's, it's two parts, actually. The first part is that the movements that I'm doing was, 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 uh, was being used by criminals, people that are murdering at the moment. So the criminal element is I'm, I'm actually copying what they're doing in terms of their movements. So that's the first thing that is different. Second thing is, now that I understand what it feels like to be murdered, in other words, the feelings that you're going to get when you attack in that way, now you're going to go the same route. You're going to learn to use the same thing um, and then discover that when you do that, you discover the criminals actually kill a lot easier. In other words, there isn't movements based on your morality that are stopping you from, uh, uh, from, uh, from killing. So killing is a very straightforward and, and, and you do it in as little physical movement as possible, right? It's very direct. The martial arts has got a lot of moves that you normally do, especially look at judo, where if you, you, you and, and again, um, I'm going to generalize now, but people choose martial arts based on their morality, like their level of, of what they prepare to do in terms of violence. They choose a martial art that matches that. So if you look at a guy that, that, that does Aikido, for instance, okay, he doesn't do it for self-defense, but at some point self-defense should step in there, right? So you look at, he's just throwing people, he's throwing people, but nobody dies. So the end result of, your, of, of all your years of training is you actually want to preserve life. Nothing wrong with that, but it will affect it in the long run. Okay, it will, it will affect. The, the fact that I can kill in two moves, you can kill in one move, but the other guy that is doing judo or is doing jujitsu has to go through a whole list of things before. And then if, when, when he does get me, what does he do? He puts me to sleep. He's not physically prepared to kill. Like That's the thing about Piper again is that the first target you are taught is the, is the heart, where to hit the heart within like a second. That's your very first target. So it's already telling you when we do this, we do, we're going to do this to kill. Now, saying that you're, that doesn't mean the person is going to die. It means that you were prepared to do it. The fact that psychologically and physically you were prepared, the worst that could happen is the guy could die. But for the most part, he doesn't die, but you never go to wound somebody. It's an accidental thing or an incidental thing. So the fact that that mindset gets you there, it's just the fact that it has to prepare you for, 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 for death, death and killing. It's, it's two sides, yes. right? Um, because again, an, uh, using a blade is higher than MTN, is higher than any MTN system. Using a blade is up there with the firearm. It's it's lethal. It is life threatening. When the two of us are fighting MTN, it's not life threatening. Incidences during the fight could potentially turn it if we are fighting on top of a roof. Yeah, it could be. But essentially, how many people have died in the, in the boxing ring? How many people have died in the, in the cage? More people died during boxing than people died in a, in, in a cage. But it wasn't because the other boxer wanted to kill the guy. It was just the fact that he had repeated head trauma. 
Yeah. Right? But despite all of that, despite the, the violence you see in these tournaments, these full contact tournaments, people generally don't die. As fit and strong as they are. You see, so that is the, the, the main difference is that it is the end goal. What is it? What what does my last technique look like? Am I throwing the guy on the ground and then just punching him to the face and then it's finished? It's like, well, then that's not a killing system. Because the way you finished was, well, you're not prepared to do it. You're not prepared to kill. So the preparation for killing has to be in the actual the technique. Where you hit, like, like the first target in pipe is the heart. We don't even go for anything else. So your first technique is the heart. The second technique is a carotid artery. That's the second technique. Third is probably the eye, which is now you'll see we, 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 it doesn't get more deadly. It, it, it you know, starts to even out. But if your basic technique is the heart, that already tells you at what level you're starting. But if, if we do, if we do uh, boxing, for instance, you're teaching me to punch in the face, but you do it in such a way that my knuckles are protected, but I can rock the other guy. But you don't teach me to punch somebody so I can automatically kill him. You see, if he dies, it's probably because of repeated punches to the head, his head hitting the ground. It's a list of yes. things that, that, that must have happened. And you know that with all the fights you've had, while you've had a lot of fights on the same tatami in the dojo, it's the same environment. The fights you've had outside, the environment changed everything. Every time you're in a, in a, in a, in a, in a scuffle, you're in a different environment. There's walls, there's open doors, there's glass. It's slippery, the floor was slippery, you couldn't see. Those factors all change the, the, the outcome. Yes. But in the dojo, it's basically it's, it's controlled. We spoke about it earlier when you when you fight a higher belt in a, in, 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 in a dojo. Uh, it's a negotiation. You, you decide that this is the best avenue for me and my skill in the street. You don't have the choice of when the guy's going to attack you, how many, and the level at which. So if he wants to kill me, I'm not, I cannot negotiate that with him and say I'm not ready for that yet. So those are just the differences that, that you have to highlight. But it's not difficult to, to overcome. It's just as good that we first identify what, what's, um, um, you know, what the differences are, and that's it. Just identify them and say it's not like the other. This is the difference. Yes. Okay. And uh, it's actually uh, uh, it's uh, it's a little bit uh, about uh, what we discussed uh, before uh, uh, before we we did this uh, this video uh, about the, the the classification of of the the different kinds of, of violence. So the the, the 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 five six uh, big characteristics of each kind of uh, encounter. Either if you have if you are in a in a domination dom dominance a hierarchical fight, or if you are more in a life or death situation. So yeah, that's okay. That that makes a lot of of sense. And um, so. Um, Still on that on that topic, I was uh, thinking uh, when you see people uh, exposed to chaos. So we were discussing about aggression, or or we were discussing uh, discussing about fire, but here maybe more specifically about violence. Uh, people exposed to chaos uh, react in very different ways. So some will just try to run away or panic. Some will confront it. Some will even try to uh, to seek it in, in some uh, some profiles. So, uh, what what do you think shapes this uh, uh, this relationship to to chaos? In 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 what way? Like, um, is it? Uh, would you say it's intrinsic to to people or? Is it possible to change it? And if so, uh, what can change it? Um, see what I mean? Okay. So, if I understand the question properly, the 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 if you want to make someone like if you want to know if somebody can become violent, 
um, it's your environment. That's the first thing. Your environment makes you either adapt or die. Mm-hmm. So, so let's say you live in an area where there are wolves, right? Just wolves, like within meters, there's just wolves. And every night you have to protect your home from wolves breaking in. So they're all breaking in, trying to grab you or trying to carry one of the kids off. So you start becoming, it's going to be stressful, but then you start getting smart, start building traps. You know, you start figuring out to poison them, how to, to catch one of them. You start to fight back. You start to try to intimidate. In the beginning, you're trying to defend yourself, but afterwards you start becoming more and more aggressive in, in terms of this. Now I'm going to be, be, be preemptive when, 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 when I prepare for the wolves. But let's say my house was surrounded by... By, by rabbits, you know, and the rabbits are just in my garden every day and, and you know, I just have to make sure I don't step on them. So, so you see, I can't, you can't say I'm a violent person. It's because I respond to my environment, my immediate environment. So if, you, if you're living in an area where there are bears and wolves around, you will be a lot more sharper why? Because you, you have to, when you adapt to the environment, remember you didn't change the environment. You can't change it. You can't kill all the wolves. It's impossible, right? Um, you can't kill all of them. So obviously it's, a, it's a, an adaptive die situation. So that, this is how violence works. You get people that choose to be in those areas, right? They, you know, because where they live is too, is, is, is too quiet. So there are guys that love that. You know, no, really, you know. Yeah, um, but um, I was thinking uh, about specific examples. <laughs> no, well, uh, uh, um, that's just, you know, I'm, uh, those are the exceptions, but I'm speaking about the rule now, is that you'll take someone that, that has grown up in a, in a violent um, environment and sees no other way. In other words, you've, you've looked at all the other options to stop, you know, what's happening. The only other option is to, to actually do what they are doing to you, right? You, you, you can't do what Gandhi did and, and try to lead non-resistance. They still attack Gandhi. They still beat him. You know, at some point, your body is going to give in, you know, when you don't retaliate. Um, and, you know, at some point, it's just going to be a matter of your body is just going to give up at some point. But in terms of violence, if you are in that situation and you don't leave, it's going to change you. Yes. Yeah, it's going to change you like, 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 like your morality is going to start to be questioned because now the, in this environment, people are just walking into your house and taking what they want. On the Cape Flats, people getting shot in their homes like the gangsters would just knock the door down and just start shooting everybody while they're watching TV. Now, somebody from a quiet neighborhood can't even think that that is possible. Yes. And so... The, the, the answer would be uh, mostly exposure then, uh, if I understand uh, what you mean. I was thinking here, uh, when, I, when I wrote down that question, I was thinking about, uh, you know, if you take, again, the, the example of fire. I, I have been working with firefighters, and they are an interesting example when you think about it from a natural standpoint. Uh, you know, you don't like fire when it's burning your house. You want to go away. People want to go away. But firefighters, those guys, they like that in some way. You know, they, they, they jump in the truck and they go to fight the fire, actually. So in some way, they look for chaos. But what is interesting is that for them, uh, it's not chaos. It's an order that they understand and most people don't because how many times will your house burn in your life probably not many probably not once how many times did they see a house burning hundreds so uh, i i i really uh, agree with you on that uh, exposure idea uh, i think the, the idea would be in relation to chaos there is that uh, I see that as uh, you know, society can be could be like a, a campfire. There is what is in the light, so that's order, and what is outside the light, that's chaos. You don't know what's there, 
uh, maybe it's dangerous, maybe there is nothing, you don't know and you cannot predict. And when, when you start to expose yourself uh, more and more, like with violence and, and martial arts and Viper, uh, you actually start to make something that you didn't understand and couldn't predict into something you can predict a little bit more or at least predict your reactions to it. And so you take chaos and you make it a little piece of uh, a little extra piece of order, or at least you, you, you reduce the part of chaos. So yeah, that's, that's a, that's a very interesting uh, answer because um, it, it's, uh, it's relating with what I was thinking about fire in this case or, or violence. No, I think I think um, I understand. I understand um, what you were specifically referring to is um, there's two kinds of people. Um, it's either sheep or your sheep dog. You speaking about the sheep dog that he thrives when there's chaos in order to create that balance. He needs to make sure somebody has to somebody has to do it. Somebody yeah. has to put the fires out. So there are those types of people that that is designed for this. They're designed for this level of violence. They can understand this. Why? Because they are needed to 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 create balance. There has to be an equilibrium between order and chaos. But if the chaos gets too much, sheep dogs have to be called in to 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 quell it. I didn't say you're gonna take get rid of violence forever. I'm saying you are gonna be you will respond to it more positively than I would, right? You know, because it's happening to me. Uh, somebody's burgled my house. I don't take the law into my own hands. I call sheepdogs to actually people that that want to do this. Yes. You know. So, so I think. So I think that's how I understand your your um, your question is because exactly why firemen do it. They don't do it because they have a love affair with with fire. It's because the fear of fire is what's driving them to you know to to to, to combat it. Look, I, I was I was uh, uh, in an industrial fire um, as well, um, and where I worked in the pharmaceutical industry, I was part of a fire team. So we actually fought real fires, and it was strange because after like days after the the, the incident, I only started to feel the fear of of what happened. I only started to realize like, wow, that was that was heavy. I I responded that late. I freaked out then. But during the, 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 the moment, I was so calm because I knew that if we let this fire continue, in other words, if we let the fire department, we waited for them, it could have erupted and blown like a city block because there was, such a, there was so much chemicals underground, yes. uh, so much gas underground that you know, you you basically said, I don't care what happens to me, but we're gonna have to try and, and, and stop this, which is a, which is, um, I mean, this this happened in '96, so I wasn't like the bravest guy back then, but it was a case of you better, you better do this now because you're not gonna get a second chance. It's a fire. It's it's, it's you know you can't control it, but if you can control it now in the beginning, so yes, it's the sheepdog mentality that um you know that is you know that gives us policemen that gives us soldiers that gives us firemen um the people that actually protect us that's that's something um we, we discussed about that uh off camera uh, a few weeks ago i think but that that's something that needs uh maybe to be said uh, uh on the video I, I was thinking about that uh, about what you say um there are people probably right now maybe even some watching this video uh sometimes they don't feel uh, appropriate uh at my uh, humble level i have been there also when i was younger you know sometimes you feel you feel more comfortable in chaos than in order to some extent so um I think it's important to, to also for those people to know that um, they are not abnormal. There is, a, there is a role for them, there is a place for them. 
maybe it's a little bit more at the fringe of the order where it needs chaos and where it needs people that are comfortable with spikes of, of, uh, of things. So uh, it can be firefighters, it can be, uh, you know, uh, EMT, it can be uh, policemen, it can be military, it can be a bodyguard, it can be uh, um, emergency room doctors, it can be many things, but uh, the fact that uh, people have that profile doesn't mean that they should necessarily change, just means that maybe they are not in the right environment to use that profile. I think it's important to have people like that in any case, or our society wouldn't survive. To have the doctor um, that is willing to spend 23, 24 hours without sleep taking care of patients, but people that, like, a doctor will see to a violent criminal who has been hurt, he will try his best to save that man's life, despite this criminal killing 10 people. You know, so it, it takes a very special kind of person and mentality to, to, to make those types of sacrifices. Running into a building, um, saving a stranger, for instance, when a building is burning and falling down. Um, and there's people that, that are comfortable with that. They, that's how they want to, 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 to do it. And it's, uh, it's through what you said, not enough is being spoken of those types of people. It doesn't make you abnormal. I think. It's the type of order that, that that's the order that we need for the chaos. Um, EMT, uh, 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 um, uh, your paramedics, those guys are, are, are having to see horrible things, saving people in car crashes, you know, being the last person that a dying person sees, holding someone, a strange in their hands and the, the person dying in the hands. So they have to, they choose to do this because they can, you know, they can handle it. I can't. Yes. But, you know, like bouncers. I mean, I tried bouncing years, years ago, but I, I did events bouncing. And it was, I didn't do clubs. I did events, meaning that it was a lot more, it was easier because if the person gets thrown out of an event, the event doesn't happen again. You know, it's, yeah. a, it's a once in a while type of thing. So you get people generally on their best behavior, but nightclubs are a different thing. So for bouncers to go through that and then, you know, risk being cut and having, you know, blood related diseases, um, then it's the amount of drugs that they that they could be, you know, that they've been involved in. And then when they go home, the amount of threats on their lives going home, yes. um, you know, yes. so uh, going to the shop and, and or, you know, going to the store um, on the off days and, 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 and seeing the guy that they just threw up two nights ago, and this guy is waiting for him in the parking lot, you know, because uh, he took it serious and it was just a job for me. So those are the, 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 the type of people that want to do this. But if they're not there, who's going to do it? Yes, that's, uh, that's a very important message because, uh, you know, some people, uh, some people are depressed, some people suicide commit suicide some people even do mass killings because they don't have the right uh, place so here i'm not mm. obviously not defending uh, mass killings uh, what i'm saying is that if people have more informations about themselves they know themselves better and they know that there is a place for any every profile uh, that can reduce many many incidents. So I think that's mm. that's really something important to to get uh, out. So um, yeah, that was a <laughs> silent moment. Um, do you have any uh, anything to uh, add for today? Because uh, you, you told me you weren't available for a very long time, so I think we will have to to, to cut. Uh, do you want to add anything to this discussion? Uh, look, look, my main uh, my main uh, I would say theme, the thing I believe in the most. Um, I'm not a I don't advocate violence. That's the first thing. I don't advocate it, but 
I I tell people they mustn't be they mustn't be o- oblivious um, um, to the fact violence is the gold standard. Governments use it, criminal syndicates use it, criminals use it. Um, that's that, that's how our society has been shaped. And I've said it before. That is the central theme. Under no circumstance must must people think that that pacifists. Um, can 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 negotiate. You don't negotiate the bullet once it's left the, the the chamber of a gun. It's too late. You know. So this is where they wanna. This is the world they find themselves in. So I think people need to start studying. Um, um, when I used to say years ago, I used to say you need to study your criminals, study your criminals in your culture. The reason for that is because they are prone to commit violence on innocent people. Okay. So, you, they are the experts when it comes to killing, not the military. Yes. In South Africa, it's like yes. the, the, the guys that kill the most with knives are criminals. So, they are the experts. You then figure out what they're doing. You don't go and ask a guy that is uh, trained knife fighting for, for 30 years. It's like he knows nothing about, about what it actually takes. Um, so, while Violence is 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 an uh, um, unpleasant thing. It is a needed thing because you can see what's uh, uh, what's happened. How do you stop a mass shooter? You're gonna have to you have to use violence to stop him, or the threat yes. of violence to stop him. There's no other way. That's the world that we're living in. Is because there's people that believe that um, other things are to blame for you know for violence happening. I'm saying you guys need to, we, we all need to start learning where violence comes from in ourselves. So it's always, it's always the people that are not violent, that are not, that can't fight, that get into fights. That is what Joe Rogan used to say is that you can't believe our people that um, can't, they don't have any training, no knowledge of how to, to actually throw a punch. They're the first ones that jump in. They don't even think of the, of the consequences. That's normally what happens with the untrained. The untrained are giving us advice on violence and countering violence by saying uh, when a bully hits you, don't hit back because violence is not the answer. Oh, uh, yeah, if you hit back, he's not gonna, there's not going to be a bully anymore. Mm. That's how you stop it. Yes, definitely. If you want to stop violence, start to be able to use it. Yes, that's like my father said, if, if <laughs> you take crap from no one, And when, when, when people see just how committed you are to violence, they will start walking around you in white circles and respect you because people only respect what they fear, what they physically fear. That's the only time people respect you and that is sad. But like I said, when it comes to, to, to um, living with myself, you know, in terms of philosophy and stuff like that, it doesn't mean like Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee could be or, or was a good philosopher. Why? Because you could punch a hole in your chest. You could physically fight. Then he can reflect on, on his actions. That's why I say, if you want to be a philosopher, first be a martial artist. First be a warrior. If you're a warrior, you have a better chance of, of being a scholar. Why? You, you understand the two. You understand I'm only a scholar because the warrior allows me to be a scholar. He's yes. given me his fort. His blood was spilled to give me this peace. You see, so I think that's the... That's the central theme, um, you know, for for anybody listening is, um, you know, it's not an advertisement for for um, for Piper. It's it's understanding, you know, you know, why would you choose something like that in the first place? Yes. You know, why would you choose the, uh, to train in in a killing system like Piper? Why? Something is something inside you that is that is curious, but it's also violence is why we do martial arts, the ability to fight. You have at some point you're gonna have to fight something. Might not, and and again you will get all these guys doing lectures on 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 YouTube, um, trying to negotiate. You can't negotiate with somebody that's already committed to violence. You can't. Yes. That's I, 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 there's no other way. Yes, definitely. Okay, um, that was uh, as cool. usual very very interesting. Uh, for all the people who still watch, um, 
don't hesitate to uh, post uh, comments uh, if you want to react if you want to ask questions uh, we will do we will be doing that again i uh, guess in a few weeks um, so uh, nigel thank you very much for your time and uh, see you soon my pleasure Laurent. see you guys <laughs>